Okay, we met in closed session. And pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County met in a closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice, to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Has everyone had a chance to approve, um, to review the agenda for tonight? Make a motion we approve the agenda. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of the minutes from July 19, 2023, closed session. Do I have a motion? make a motion we approve the closed session July 19th second all right motion a second all those in favor say aye. aye aye approval of the minutes for July 19th 2023 open session do I have a motion so moved second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. okay awards Good evening. We have one recognition this evening. This award is the Energizer Bunny Award, and it's given to a staff member or volunteer who keeps on going. It's sponsored by Bayview Financial with Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys, if they'll please come forward. And this nomination was made by Matt Evans. Mr. Evans, if you could please come forward. And we also have the school principal here, if Ms. Welsh could please come forward. So our Energizer Bunny, this um, board meeting is Nancy. Nancy could please come forward. Nancy is a teacher specialist at Bayside Elementary School and works hard to serve students, families, and staff in that position. That being said, Nancy is here tonight as she has gone above and beyond the teacher specialist duties in order to assist the creation and implementation of social emotional learning at the district level, not just at Bayside. During the COVID-19 school closures, Nancy was an instrumental person in expanding the zones of regulation curriculum to the entire district and continues to grow and improve the social emotional learning implementation at all grade levels. Again, not just at elementary. Through her efforts and leadership, Nancy coordinated quarterly meetings, summer curriculum writing and professional development to ensure all the importance in incorporating social emotional learning into the school day. Queen Anne's County Public School now has a social emotional learning Google site, thanks to me, that provides frameworks, lesson plans, and resources for all teachers and staff to use when implementing social and emotional learning. Without Nancy, social emotional learning in Queen Anne's County Public School would not be where it is today. So thank you for going above and beyond. So we are on roller skates <laughs> as our summer school is coming to a close, as we are finalizing um, all of our summer projects and um, gearing up yet for a new school year. We, um, our timeline is quickly approaching. We have uh, our administrative retreat next a week. The following week, we have our new teachers coming in. The following week, our regular staff come back, our 10 month employees, and we're all gonna be ready for to accept students on the first day. And we're just really excited. We're a little exhausted, but we're very excited about yeah, the upcoming school year. 
All right. Citizen participation. Do we have anyone uh, who wants to speak tonight? We do. On the list? All right. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which this board has authority. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comments and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have any specific questions, the board will make sure an, an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you show respect for all. Mr. Richard McNeil. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Richard McNeil, uh, live in Centerville and represent the retired uh, school personnel. And uh, a couple of things I want to mention tonight uh, at the annual uh, meeting at the state level in July, our organization was recognized as uh, making the most improvement in membership and quality of uh, uh, programs by 11%. So I was real, real happy with that. Uh, I don't take the credit for that. I have a wonderful uh, uh, executive team that put those things together, but it was nice to be recognized on a state level. The next one that was closest to us was 3%. So uh, I felt uh, pretty good. And we're looking for members. So anybody's going to retire, let us know. <laughs> on that the other thing, uh, I want to thank the uh, superintendent and uh, Sid and the county commissioners uh, for giving us a letter of support for a grant that we wrote for the um, Hope School, the one room schoolhouse uh, out um, in front of the high school. Um, also, a big thanks to uh, Christina Webster, who is the grant writer and overseer of a lot of the grants through the board. Um, her expertise and, and my uh, fumbling typing, we, she put it together in, in a nice, uh, nice form. Uh, it was something like 27 pages of, of information that you had to do. And um, the first report we got back from this organization was that uh, it looked very good. We didn't have to make any amendments to it. So we're hopeful that we can use the money to do some repairs on the Hope School so that it'll be in good shape for the next 10, 15, 20 years or more. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and we will keep Sid in, informed since he is the owner of the building through the Board of Education and uh, so forth. The other thing is I wanna uh, just wish the uh, superintendent and her staff well. I know what this is like when August hits and, and how uh, looking for the last minute of any staff that's not f complete. Uh, I've been through that many years ago and I'm not looking forward to doing it again. In fact, I was asked last week if I would want to come back and teach in a math class. So uh, the answer is no. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So best of luck as you get going. And uh, I know it's a busy time and um, good luck with the retreat, if that's the right thing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think you did, 33 seconds left. <laughs> Cecilia Mitchell. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Cecilia Mitchell. I live in Centerville. I am a teacher here in Queen Anne's County, and I am serving as the acting president of the Queen Anne's County oh. Education Association as a result of the retirement of Karen Fields, who served as our president for eight years. So I just wanted to come and say hello. Um, I have a list because I get nervous. So um, we're just looking forward as everyone is to the longest Sunday of the year, which is called August for Teachers as we look ahead, planning for the return of students and staff to the building. Um, as workers, we're looking ahead toward negotiations as we're in the second year of a two year agreement. Um, and that process will begin this year. Um, we are also looking forward to greeting our new employees, our new teachers um, with Dr. Salins. We, we meet every month with the superintendent during the school year. I'm not sure if you knew that, that continues. So we talked about how to welcome them and uh, help retain them as members of our education 
community. So we're going to be visiting teachers in the building on that day that they're setting up their classrooms to welcome them and you know, be their first new friend in the building. So someone from the building will try to be there. If not, one of the executive board will be there to just feel, make them feel more connected to our community and more welcome. Um, with regard to that welcome, none of this would happen the first day of school, the first week for new teachers, the first week for returning staff without our support staff who have worked all summer. Whether it's moving boxes because people are changing buildings or changing rooms, cleaning, maintenance, registration, all of it. We could not open every morning without them. And so I just personally, because I know a lot of my boxes were moved this year, um, say thank you for them. And again, looking forward, how we can enhance their professionalism and their compensation because one job should be enough. And we wanna be sure that we retain our support staff as well as our teaching staff. Um, so just as a personal note, so I got this in the mail last week from Eversai, and I'm a little overachiever and very competitive. So I clicked on it right away and I registered over the weekend. I could not book an appointment because the center wasn't loaded just yet, but I was able to book an appointment on the very first day they were operating, July 1st. They saw me the next morning. I even get to go back tomorrow, um, remembering not to eat any sugar in the morning, but um, just, a sh it was phenomenal. It was easy. Um, clearly, they're on a learning curve. There were trainers there. They're very invested in being sure that we're taken care of. And um, I was also told, because I'm very competitive, that I was the first person to successfully book an appointment because they were having some glitches in their system. So just want to say thank you for that. Um, and I think it's gonna be a great enhancement to our benefit package. So that's, I think it. Oh, and um, I know we meet with the superintendent every month. You guys, if you ever want to talk to us, you can find us. So that's great. it. Thank, thank, you you. thank you very much. You're welcome. <clears throat> Sean Connolly. I'll be very brief because I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, my name is Sean Connolly. I live in Chester. I'm the head coach of the Ken Island High School play target team. Um, I sent emails today, and I thank you all for your responses. Just wanted to be real quick and, uh, and give you a little bit of a, a, a spiel about uh, the reason why I want to increase the, um, the, uh, the student activity on, on the team. Uh, right now, we're capped at 20. Um, last year, it made it really hard for me to fill out that roster because I would put the invites out. Some of them they weren't eligible, so then they would pull off the roster and I'd invite somebody else. They might not respond, so that spot was, uh, was you know, went unused because um, I don't want to invite someone and then tell them they can't participate if they do, um, you know, accept the invitation. So last year we participated and we had uh, 17 students out of, out of the 20 that were allotted. So we fell a little short just because of that you know, logistics of getting everybody signed up in a short amount of time. So that's why I asked to, to remove that limit. Uh, us as coaches will make sure that we always um, take safety as the, the priority number one. Uh, the league mandates already that we have uh, one coach for every 10 students. Our squad's always one coach for every five students. So we're already doubling what the league requires and we'll We'll stick by that. We've we've we found that's the, the easiest way to go because there's five students on the line at a time, mm -hmm. but one coach with each squad, and we'll have that. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely have that going forward. Um, the first year when we limited it at ten, it was because I was the only one you guys were dealing with, and I, I understood that. Um, even though we had four coaches that first year, so we could have um, league rules. We could have had uh, forty students. My rules, we could have had twenty. Last year we had six um, coaches, you know, official coaches. We probably had eight other ones that stepped up once they realized that the uh, the sport was as easy as it is and uh, and as fun as it is. They knew what the uh, program was. We had more parents step up. So I know I'm not allowed to ask any questions or get answers. So I just wanted to give um, that little bit of a speech of um, the way we take the um, the safety aspect of it um, very seriously and we'll, we'll mandate our, our own limit as long as we have that support. And I do want to thank you all for, for providing your support and uh, seeing double at the range, um, seeing us participate. The, um, it's, been, it's been great. The, the support we've got from the community is wonderful, and I uh, hope to see you guys out there soon.
Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, yeah, thanks, John. That was our last speaker. Okay. Okay, so we're up to uh, number six, uh, second read for policy 620, materials of instruction. That's Matt Kibler. Dr. Kibler. Dr. Kibler. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Schifanelli, board members, Dr. Salins, and executive team. Uh, Matt Kibler, the director of accountability and implementation. I'm here tonight uh, to present the second read on policy 620, the materials of instruction policy. Um, there were some updates recommended from the materials of instruction committee that was led by Dr. Sprankle at the end of the school year in the very beginning of the summer. That committee included teachers, school level administrators, central office administrators, as well as parents and other interested community members. Again, this is a second read of the policy. It is posted on the website, the policy section of the website for comment. I do not believe that any comments have come in since the first read. Um, but it will still be there to the third, and then we would ask for a vote on the changes at our next board meeting. Board members, any questions? No. Nope. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we're scheduled for a break. Do we keep on going? Keep I think going. we can handle it. Okay. <laughs> Current action items uh, 8.01 Human Resources and Substitute Bus Driver Report. Um, we've had a chance to review that. Do I have a motion? I move that we accept the HR report as presented. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Dr. Sam, are we going to introduce? Yes, thank you. Okay. So th um, at this time, I'd like to introduce you to our new CFO, Mark Dufendoc. Mm -hmm. Good, mm -hmm. good, see? <laughs> Um, and if we could get up and introduce ourselves to him and thank you for approving the HR report, which now <laughs> makes him official. All right. So, so welcome, right. Mark. Mark comes to us from Delaware um, from a long history of um, I'm just public school for... K-12 financial um, experiences, and we're happy to have his expertise on our team. Hello. Thank you. Pleasure. Nice to Pleasure to meet you. All right. All right. Very yeah. nice to meet you. Mark, nice to meet you. Mark Cipinelli. Right. Yeah. Right. Thanks nice. for coming on board. Good to see you. Thank you. Right. Pleasure right. to meet you. Thank you very Welcome much. More. So, thanks for placing your confidence in me. I hope I'll, I'll do my best uh, to earn that trust and um, look forward to jumping in, jumping in <laughs> and uh, getting the vision of Queen Anne's County and uh, sorting through the, the Maryland way. Um, I have a lot of experience with school districts. Um, Maryland, uh, I have not worked for a school district in Maryland, so I'm eager to work through all the details and the mechanics of the Maryland system. So I'll have a little bit of a learning curve, but hopefully I can do that uh, pretty quickly and uh, assess where we're at and make the best decisions for us moving forward. And uh, I'm just a fact person. Um, I'm pretty much give you the numbers, uh, tell you where we're at, um, don't slant things, don't have an ego. Um, if you something doesn't look right or you have a question about something, ask me. I don't get defensive or take things personally. Um, so it's just about getting the information and the data um, to the decision makers and moving forward in the best interest of the students, staff, and community. So I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Oh, I was going to say, if you'll stay in the room, and if the second yeah. team will jump in Sorry. as well. Congratulations again. Thanks again. Thanks for being here. Sleeping, so thank you. Almost on church. All right. Next on the agenda, Digital Spanish Textbook Renewal, Dr. Guaido and Que Chevere, which means how cool in Spanish. <laughs> yes, it does. Good evening, President Schifanelli, Dr. Salins, members of the board and executive team. For the record, my name is Dr. Darren Guaido, supervisor of instruction in the areas of social studies, world languages, English learners, and service learning for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Tonight, I come before the board seeking approval for a three-year digital license renewal 
of our current Spanish text, Que Chaveri, which does mean very cool. Uh, <laughs> levels one through four for all of our teachers and students. Uh, the total cost is $77,540.61. Board members, any questions? Nope. Mr. President, I move that we approve a three-year digital license renewal in the amount of $77,540.61 for the Spanish World Language classes, level one through four, second edition. And that is from, I guess I should look at this source. For instructional costs, regular program, foreign languages, secondary, general unrestricted funds. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And I'll say que rapido, which means how quick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> how quick. Thanks a lot. Okay, another uh, or contract approval. Occupational therapy, Ms. Smith. Good evening, Good evening President Chipinelli, Dr. Salins, um, board members and members of the exec team. For the record, my name is Jolene Smith. I am the Supervisor of Special Education for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And this evening, I bring before you um, a contract for occupational therapy. Uh, this is a contract to provide occupational therapy five days a week for the school year 22, 2023 to 2024. Um, and it is to provide services across six schools in the amount of $99,750 from the a combination of restricted and unrestricted budget um, amount or areas. Questions? I know we've done these many, many times yep. and um, we appreciate, yeah, what, what you do for the system and the kids. Um, do I have a motion? Mr. President, I move that we approve the contract for Wendy Carpenter for occupational therapy services in the amount of $99,750. Budget is from the fiscal year 24 restricted and unrestricted operating budget. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 So I'll just stay here and okay. I'll do one more. Um, so I also bring before you a contract for Chesapeake Speech. Uh, this contract is for speech therapy services. This is to cover two schools. It is one provider for four days per week. Um, the contract term is the school year of 2023 to 24. Um, and it is in the amount of $92,000 coming from the FY24 unrestricted and restricted operating budgets. I did have one question. Just on the bottom of the page, it says funding is made available through the funds from grants, local and grant funds? Correct. Um, okay. It's a split funded okay. um, contract. So some of the funding does come from the local side and some of it does come through um, our pass-through grant that we get from the state. So the 92000 is all from our operating budget and then? No, that's the total amount. So it's divided. That $92,000 is the total amount. Some It's a it's a little, it's not 50-50 perfectly. It's more like kind of like a 60-40 split. Um, and some of that 92000 is hitting the local side and then the other is hitting the grant side. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, concerns? All right, I have a motion. I move to approve a contract for Chesapeake Speech for speech therapy services in the amount of $92,000 budgeted um, for unrestricted and restricted operating budget. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, contract approval, refuse and recycling, Mr. Pender. Good evening, President Schifanelli, Dr. Shalens, board members, executive team for the record. My name is uh, Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer. I am uh, before you tonight to seek approval of the use of the Maryland State contract uh, pricing for trash removal and recycling services for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Um, the Queen Anne's County Public Schools uses the BFY service, I'm sorry, Waste Services LLC. Um, Republic Services, uh, that contract has since expired. We would like to piggyback, again, utilizing the State of Maryland trash removal and recycling service contract for uh, the next two years, when, when it expires September 1st, 2025. Um, if you had looked through the package, basically every single 
County in the state of Maryland and also Baltimore City uses the um, Republic as their contract uh, provider. We, um, J.C. Earls, who is our procurement specialist, went through and worked on this project um, along with Jim O'Donnell. We actually did away with some dumpsters that we found that we had that we really weren't maximizing. So we've actually downsized um, some of our um, trash and recycling. And the amount budgeted would be uh, come out of the FY24 unrestricted operating budget uh, in the amount of $130,000. That does come in under budget for what we have allocated. Um, the schedule is very specific. It will be two times removed during the school year, during the summertime. We would drop down to one time to minimize the cost, um, except for the schools that we still continue to have summer school at. Uh, those would still be continued at two times a week. Any questions or sorry? If, well, sorry. If we had a contract already with them, why wasn't like renewed it, it instead had, of piggybacking? It had expired. Okay. So this was supposed to be brought to you back in June. So. Go ahead, sorry, Dick. The, these are for pulling the units. The tipping fee is going to be above that, right? Uh, this this is it, right? This is includes tipping includes fee. Includes tipping fee in there. So we basically had, used to have two yards, six yards, and eight yards. And what we did, we've done away with the two yards. Um, we just weren't maximizing them. And uh, the six yards, um, we would have maybe two or three at certain schools, but we can get away with an eight yard at each particular school, obviously, except for the high schools. But they're the blue ones you see out there that, um, you know, are stationary. So they just dump them and, 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 and that includes tipping the fee for the uh, Caroline County or whatever yep. they take it to. And then if we have any issues, everything is documented with their cameras. Um, they can tell you exactly when they were there, when, you know, if they weren't there, um, what was blocking it, what was in there that shouldn't be in there. So. Mm -hmm. I just have a question about just Republic. So we're piggybacking, you said, almost all of the, um, the school districts are using them. How do we know they're the best? Like, how often do they bid it out and see who's putting in the best value for all of this? This is something that JC put together, and I'm just presenting it tonight. Um, I do know she spent several months working on it. Um, like I said, Jim O'Donnell and myself, we just present it. Here's what we need as far as we can minimize the amount. Um, I. I look through it and I would say based off the pricing that was in there, it's not a huge change from what we were, um, we were spending, um, in the previous contract. It looked to me around a 3% or so, 4% increase, which that's not bad. I can tell you, um, about 10 years ago, we saw like double digit increases percentage wise. So the, the fees included in here are pretty, pretty reasonable. I think in my opinion. Thanks. So are we actually contracting with them? Because I didn't see anything that looked like contract language. We're just kind of ooh, slipping in under Maryland's yep. umbrella, correct? Yes. So right. there will actually be a, a contract once approved and signed. Okay. But um, the information on here is for the financial piece of it. Okay, I got you. But once you sign the yellow sheet, then we can go ahead and execute the contract. Yeah, right. Okay, any other questions? All right. Uh, do we have a motion? Mr. President, I move to approve the use of the Maryland State contract pricing for trash removal and recycling services for Queens County Public Schools in the amount of $130,000 and the budget source is fiscal year 24 unrestricted operating budget. Second. All right. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. All right. And I think that brings us to future meetings. The next meeting for the board is going to be the work session, regular scheduled August 16th at 5 p.m. And then the next uh, uh, meeting will be September 6th at 6 p.m. That's open session. And do I have any other comments from the board or... No, Motion enjoy the rest of your August. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Motion to adjourn. Second. So, well, okay. I'll move. I'll move to adjourn. I got a second. I second. Got a second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much and, and good evening.